Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, Master of Propaganda, Hero of Sky, Defender of the Fatherland. We're off here today. Signing one versus one on the road to Cardiff here between Django fighting in the north here for the United States of America for the third armor division. Charged here with dealing with High Five under the command of the Wehrmacht. Fighting here for the Reich, for the Deutschland. Taking on the position here of the 15th Panzer Grenadier Division. And we've got Lightning Warm Assault Support American Assault here for him versus Airborne Rifle Company and Infantry Company there for Django. Bulletins are pretty much all infantry. We got double grenadiers down the way for high five. Double rifleman there for Django. Grenadier squad is ready. We have there. So we far, strange uh, enough, he's not heading sort of directly towards the field. It seems like. And again, that might be what the rifleman here from yeah, moving in from the north will be doing. Oh, reassurance could cause me up there. And then we got a more direct move here towards the field point from high five initially. There goes single grenadier squad almost out of here. No, so far he is squad. not making any direct move towards the fuel point whatsoever. How oh, odd. Uh, so they're going for the it. munitions point first. So that can actually lead to high five having a small fuel advantage over his opponent. Small fuel advantage. And there you go, looks like. Oh. I mean, he's sort of moving towards it now, but again, he's not exactly in a right in a hurry. Third gun is got down the way for high five. No MD42 so far, no mortars when he attempted a sniper. Just grenadier, grenadier, grenadier. Yes? First engagement bound to break out about here. Then it's opening up in the rear, small rear, small being pushed back. Right from being about there, third squad almost ready. Pioneers there, and we've got the third gun is there. Rafa and Rhyming are playing as well here for Django. And there you go. Fa no, he's forgot to. Right, go. Ah, he's shifting all the rear slots, leave the Rafa at the front. I mean, that's good thinking, that's good thinking actually, but still, I mean, we are seeing their nodal advantage in fuel to high five at the moment compared to Django, who's standing a bit behind there. Then staying up position here, this side here is a bit exposed. A quick push there from Django, could maybe do something. Going to do this here, operating very much on their own range support, and there you go, got an MD42 there, arriving then for high five. Going to do this, moving out there. Pioneer saying about the liquid move up there, they could try and later spot, and there you go, first shot, spot here, or oh, additional shots. Rafa there versus Grenadiers, Rafa there out in the open, versus Grenadiers out in the building. But there's only two windows here, the Rafa might have a chance, but they might have a chance, of course, are they going to do this, they will arrive. In which case, we've got Pioneers joining in there. So, at range, they won't be able to do much. There we go. Paul Hank already gave his life there for the United States of America. Hines fell over. And there you go. Robin pushed back. There's some nasty damage they inflicted upon them. Now, this is not pushing into support. They insist the pioneers are sort of left to do that while we're going to do this. Basically, hold back behind the fence. At the same time, we got some spiders skirmishing on the right flank. Robin pushing in. There we go. There we go. This is dangerous. The enemy has driven a wedge Cut off point. There's open. Of course, at the same time, it looks like here high five is returning the favour. So both players are going in very aggressively, sort of from the side ank, but sli slanted assault there, going for the cut offs of both sides. So far, they've got him forty able to set up, so that might be denied. Where he's actually sort of digging, he could actually consider laying up some S mines right around here. That could actually force any user then being forced to retreat to have to run through the S mines. That would actually be a very devious move. There we got a second MP42. High five going for a heavy G1 versus the Americans. Always something I. Like to caution against that, particularly if they go for a lieutenant. Of course, it seems to be the case. I'm going to quick turn, they can then actually catch you rather flat foot. But there you go, nice flank here. The reaction on tactics, forcing MP4 to off. They've got more grenades up there. Trouble with the rifle, they go cut off. It's now on both sides. No sign of SMI still here from High Farm. Do you really think it would have been for that? Or maybe some bar wire, just something sort of make things a bit more difficult and hazardous for the Americans sort of maneuver about with M40 trying to stop the seal getting pushed down here. But the rifle is going to have to retreat here before he is annihilated. And then M40 up north at the same time, the rifle is probably going to be up into the building. There we go. High Farm forced to pull back. Both M40 is the Lieutenant arrives here to support Janko's troops. you got the kind of distance moving right there, Mike John. Got up, caught them more fuel here. Trying to cap the pot, re cut off here with the pioneers. The pioneers lead the way there, rifle counter attacking against, while at the same time trying to score the fuel point for the United States. Some very aggressive advancements, very aggressive attempts they cut off each side here, which basically results in both sides being heavily cut off from their own territory. 
with neither side really gaining any resources then. A bit of a rare occurrence! At least sort of currently in company with Suji Act, you find this a bit interesting. But there you go, I mean they both managed to catch off, they're both harassing each other, but both of them are not really holding any territory, at least not any connected territory. High five there, taking up. Jango with quite a bit of manpower there floating. I mean, he could consider him going for docks and calling some more troops. Cashers would all be good. I mean, that could for some use to secure this cut upon there versus any further harassment there from High Five. High Five not quite throwing too many resources. He could try and tell like to make a nice company as soon as the comfortable headquarters is ready. To with the Lieutenant, of course, I mean, otherwise, you might consider, you know, seeing the Captain 6 trying to rush for Tier 3, since they'd be sort of less immediate threats to his heavy Tier 1. There you go, like to make a nice company up. He's being pushed back. He's trying to regain that, but again, we notice here that Jank has been able to secure a lot of territory there away from High Farm. Of course, High Farm has been able to return the favour a bit up north, but not quite to the same extent. And again, a lack of mind seeking up rather ensures that Jank isn't exactly facing a lot of obstacles and definitely think that's a bit of a missed opportunity there by high five. Even if it had bought one in the right place could have made things a lot more difficult. Jank could even cost him some casualties as he all of a sudden found his men dead in a minefield or what remained of a minefield what was this the mines went off. We got a two to one there on the way, that's good. That might certainly help versus any M twenty and he's almost there at thousand manpower already, Mr. Django. Not entirely sure what he's thinking. There's still no doctor and chosen. I mean he I suppose he could go for Airborne Company calling some pathfinders. That's trying to give his troops their bit of extra support, but otherwise caches would be a good move. Fighting positions could also be set up, you know, just don't float that much manpower. Two to one in the way, two to one on the way, like to punch his beer bargain. And the first scout across the German tank yet, although there was one that was served before that, which actually looked surprisingly like the scout white, or the white scout car, the M3A1 in a sense. It wasn't quite built for transporting, but still looked rather a lot like it. Fourth gun it is what there for high five. I don't think he should have gone for that. I mean, I think Panzer would have better chosen maybe a pack 40 rather than a fourth grenadier squad at the moment. I don't really think he needs more rifle infantry. I mean, assault infantry would do him better. Maybe a half track squad. Or caches would even be better than the fourth grenadier squad. I mean, I do think a lot of American or German players, specifically Wehrmacht players, have a slight tendency just going to him on the grenadiers for no real good reason and have actually suffering a bit of a heavy manpower bleed without any real gain in the long run. Now it's setting up minefields, but again, not really think where it's sort of going to have a huge impact on Pedro again, where a bit of more forward mining could have done something. Still floating on manpower there. I'm not entirely sure again what Janko's thinking. We got the M15A1 there on the way for Janko. The American attack of half tank was one of several, though this one of course had a bit of slightly bigger guns in terms of design there. Also a bit more of a peculiar design compared to the crap mower. They're engaging away. Rock and push away. Still, I think, you know, something else in the Falkland is what is to do better. Mortar, sniper. You could also go on for assault support, called in an officer. I think it could also go for some more blitzes. And there's overall a lot better option, I think, than the fourth Grenadier squad at this stage in the game. Anyways, bring about. He's still playing got manpower. I mean, this is rather rare for sort of a match like that. And this isn't, you know, novice level fight. This is, well, he's supposed to be some higher ranking players. I mean, he's a bit rare there. And certainly, again, not generally what I'd recommend. Just overall strike. Bloody weird. I mean, he could call in Pathfinder. He's going to airdrop in a 50 caliber. So far, a bit of support of calling some 50 caliber of his own, obviously. We got ooh, bazookas here being researched, which is a bit of a surprise. I mean, generally you don't see bazookas here being researched, but there you go. Django is researching bazookas in a rarely seen. Well, I mean, some players do like to go in case they get hit for off guard. There we go. M15 there moving in, taking hits with the two 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 sets of a cannon, taking the good part down to return. Bazookas now available for pickup. Need to be careful on these, rather. Aggressive play with it, and there we go. Panther pass against it. Pack 40, they're almost done. So much manpower being flooded. I mean, it's not like Django's got really any excuse for it. I mean, it's getting in. As always, I would say if you're in doubt, just do something. I mean, better train yourself to at least sort of spend your resources and sort of afterwards train yourself to be better, sort of spending it better than, you know, just having it flown there because it doesn't really give you any benefit. I mean, 
If you have plenty of pet hawks resources, you're going to have more resources. If you're a nice can overwhelm your resources and overall quickly gain himself an overall big advantage that way. So I mean there's no great advantage there. We got grenades down the way, and we got bazookas there being handed out. Quite a few actually. Who's actually going to be able to threaten that light vehicle there a bit nasty in any armor them? I have to be more careful. Got a noble blitz cargo truck there, Ryan. Of course, the noble blitz was used for many purposes. Some of them were even used as troop transports, obviously. Some of them were actually equipped with machine guns, and some even had uh, two centimeter flax mounted on their backs to sort of, you know, support fire that way. So, I mean, some fun facts there on the Opel Blitz, which was one of the many trucks the Wehrmacht used. In fact, the Wehrmacht used so many trucks and actually gave them some rather larger logistical issues since they could end up with, you know, not having the right parts since they could end up having both French, Austrian, Czech trucks for example in one place even Americans one they still no Russian ones I mean that rather gave the Wehrmacht a bit of a headache there in many regards but he's heading up here and note he's securing the fuel point actually getting a lot more fuel out of that point which of course even while Django at the moment has most of the map there he's not going to have a huge advantage there and Django's going for the second empty that's also very rare I mean most players would maybe you know only go for one light vehicle but again Django does seem to have some kind of strategy in mind. I just wish he'd actually involved also setting up some bloody caches instead of trying to you know, float on some kind of sea of resources. Well, there you go, we got Hi Fi pushing ahead here, rapidly securing territory. Taking up here, good, good, good. That is good. Some take up there, not trying to wait for Tigers. Of course, I mean, that regard, you know, seeing up the old here on the fuel point. So, the also aids with that, so it does give him a notably more fuel. So, nicely done there, nicely done. <laughs> Minister versus Rifleman. And there we go, Django setting a fuel cache, setting a fuel cache here. We got a second of Blitz having moved up to support the front line Tobin here for the 15th Panzer Canada Division, moved in from Italy. Rather than taking mana losses here from Sigana Dire, caught there being secured. And we got the second M15A1 here for Django. But at least he's floating a notably less fuel there. Oh, manpower more specifically. We got an ambulance there in the way. Rather there. Oh, Lieutenant more specifically. Rather there pushing back the Grenadiers there with some successful good shots there. Lieutenant Dan. Doing a good job there for the US Army. And there we go. Pioneers end up with a bit more than expected. There's the M15A1 opens up there. Thirteen with a gun and dual 50 calibers tearing apart the poor bastards. 2-2 two, two, two here, engaging with Alphamon, there we go, Ralph Grenade, tears Lieutenant apart, Lieutenant Dan, dead, right here, somewhere, in France or Belgium, or something like that, there's any two out, but now High Five is actually securing himself quite a bit of resources, both munitions, but also in particular fuel, then with all these fuel cases up, I mean, Django will be able to sort of offset that fuel advantage a bit, which is actually good for him. There you go, pack fire, 2 2, two fire unit, pack fire, and there you go, in this case, I mean, Django rushed it in without, you know, any support, I mean, basically, more importantly, a screen. Right Not really destroyed. a good choice there, rather poor tactical maneuver there by Django, and he'd got punished hard here by the fist of the Third Reich. High five. Troops reinforcing, need some serious healing. We got paratroops there ramming as well now for him, should definitely give him some more firepower. Three echelons laying down a third fuel cache. That's quite a few fuel caches there. Actually, against high fives, two open blitzers. He's certainly quite a bit there. Plus, of course, they've got the resources from there. A bit more aggressive action here on the flank, though, of course. He might want to get some armor up. I mean, he's got access to the third tier now, so support armor core could be a good thing. Could quickly follow up with maybe a panzer for him and a flat panzer right now. Of course, all the bazookas are. I mean, they still have some issues there. I mean, that's about. At least four bazookas here for Mr. Django, which would actually be able to at least cause medium armor to be, well, notably more cautious. I mean, one wrong move with that could easily end up taking quite a bit of damage being close to half health in a few bursts there. So, I mean, there are some threats there. Plus, with all the grenades here, I mean, the infantry is certainly not harmless against high fives to either. Man and Gage Nicholas up the code paratroops when we hit. We got brown lap machine guns there. Rather common choice the brown lap machine guns, certainly. Quite straightforward. MG42 on the Americans. This is not, I mean, he hasn't really used his MG42s very much in some regards. They've been rather holding back. But there you go, easily outflanked here. Rather broad front here. I mean, no rule, can't really cover it all. And there you go, I mean, you see here that Django's going to take advantage of that. Looks like here we're going to see it wiped out. Okay, no, 
There you go. Taught to the here trying to cover up. Oh, Blitz needs to get away as well. Not enough troops to support. No gun leads. So he's not a sufficient number. Instead, they actually occupy elsewhere. He's still trying to respond to this. I mean, he could probably, you know, flank them from the north here. Got behind the American force. Dumps of Sizzle. There you go. Two Sizzle push back. Kevin Suga find there. You go. Knocked out. Open Blitz also in pretty deep shite. So drive, Blitz, drive. I don't want to die in an Opel Blitz. It would be humiliating. I want to die in an answer at the very least. My an ice cream wagon. Yusuf then he pushed back, still trying to get that fuel cast, trying to cut him off, but at the same time, I mean, he's so focused on. Just rather than getting anything else, he might actually end up. Oh! Lost in double blitz there. Pack also lost here, and we might actually hear that. Gang reaction next off with it. The thief. So, Palmer call this up for half a quick quick add in a Panzer 4 if you want, so you could actually try and aim for two Stoops with a bit more firepower, yes. though obviously some other disadvantages. But now he is going for the Panzer Kampfagentur here. Send in from a nearby Panzer Division support the 15th. Panzer Grenadier. But Django here able to execute a nice assault here. Probably caught a bit of guard here by the grenades and the bazookas. In that regard, Django is actually putting a lot of emphasis here on his infantry, upgrading them quite well, heavily, and to a certain extent, actually quite successfully. Rather catching high five here of guard. I mean, you don't really see a lot of American players in general go for bazookas. Of course, going to introduce how they perform most of the Panzer Force, though generally they should have a decent chance of penetrating the armor. He's also probably gone for the mages, he can soon call in some of his own armor. He's lost one fuel cast, the other's been cut off for the time the being. Of course, he can soon do something attack. about that, I imagine. Our way though, Panzer come fire mobilized. Rolling ahead there across the green fields. And the MD42 there pilfered away as well, so he's actually got a pack 40 here. And an MD42 now to his arsenal, that's definitely going to cause a bit of problem there for high five. To put it mildly. Setting up his old blitz here after getting it repaired in the first place. Good, good. I need to move it slightly further forwards. Troops there slightly maneuvering about. Got a large force here, lieutenant and rifleman. Hands for there in the move, gonna deal some weight as well. Place the spot, and there you go. Air troops under fire, need to retreat. Sergeant Jackson might want to consider getting out of there before he ends up as a road killer alongside his squad. There you go, going to put back here by a large American assault there. Throw Django, he's fooled himself and cut off, and that's actually now two fuel points in the hands of 5 5, and he just needs to move that up and he begins to carry resources again. Then he could get a lot more fuel as well there. And we need some too. So a nice counter attack here from High 5 versus Django's third armor. So far, no armor though from him. Again, lots of bazookas here. Lots of bazookas. Finally, there's a tron. There we go, we got a minefield here, but the lieutenant is quick to make sure we're there. Time to stop seeing an and the BAR, the Browning Automatic Rifle. I mean, that is something that Janko could set up going to as well. The BAR, you know, a mix of bazookas and BAR here, BARs for his force, which then give a bit of punch. This is both infantry and armor. And he could also just consider upgrading in the rear shots with the second bazooka, forming them into a sort of more proper anti tank team. Oops, they're hanging about. Pack 40 on the way again for high fire to replace the one lost. Nothing further going on here. He's finally secured the resource there. He's losing access to the fuel soon. The one in the north of this. Though. Still remaining with the Gunnadies. He should at least then consider up being with the light machine to be able to hold the building better, though. Overall, can't help but feel he's just basically throwing them away by sticking away all of them. It's all up here. Gunnadies out in the open. Take bazooka by there. Rockets flying overhead. Panther 4 moving in. Got to hit me on the Panther 4. We see high five coming a bit cautious. Quick drive grenade there. Oh, hits the rifle. Almost wipes them. Almost wipes them. And there you go. Ah, taught. It's a for Germany. And there you go. Petrus moving up. He might see a panel gate there. Pop through the window. If you can pop it right around, he should actually have a good chance to wipe the entire unit since they'll then be sort of all around here. One thing to keep in mind about throwing throwing grenades is generally it sort of depends on where they are in the building. I mean, if for some, for some reason they're all the way over here and there's some only here, I mean the ones over here won't for some suffer any damage. For example, you can hit a grenade on a building, try to sort of get to where they're sort of all assembled in one spot. But enough, doesn't get it off, except we're actually retreating here. Surprise, surprise. Fuel cash up here for high five, no additional over blitzes, but I figure that maybe. And you got a Jackson in the way for Django, a Jackson. There's a taking heavy damage from the lieutenant, closing in a bit to flee. Troops are hanging about doing not an awful lot. 
going a few upon their back for the United States of America in the base of the meanwhile I mean Haifa's right now got the option calling in on the pants where we could actually then pressure Django quite nicely we've got more paratroops by the way around there and so far they does not seem to do that we actually now if ending up for a tiger I mean with the fuel he's getting with the fuel casters of Blitz and so on he could you know make it work but I don't know, I think it'd be part of me would rather see in another panther when the line should be more aggressive now rather than later. Hey, of course, I have to see how it ultimately works out. But he's down to three bazookas now, hasn't done anything to maybe replace the ones lost there. Another pair of browning up machine guns there for the paratroopers, the ones freshly arrived, and there we go. We tend to have a fire here from the panther fork, and it's supporting as well. There you go, not a good situation there. And the lieutenant is dead again, certainly a high rate of attrition there amongst the junior officers, which was actually quite common for most armies, in particular the German army had some larger problems with that due to the emphasis on them actually, you know, showing personal initiative and all that and leading from the front. Another army that also had problems with that was actually the British army. In fact, they had to borrow officers from the Canadian army at times to sort of make up for their own junior officer losses. In fact, they caused in some cases the Germans to think they're actually fighting against Americans rather than British troops. There you go, quick grenade there, forcing back the gun of the ears. Good job, good job. No smoke screen still here from Django. I mean, that could be helpful there versus High Five. Who's getting a sniper now? A shaft should Ready to copy. Panther 4 comes down to be a bit more aggressive here. Or is the Zooka's actually keeping High Five here rather paranoid? There you go, Panther 4 moving ahead. Good hit there for the Zooka, connects with the rear. Jack's moving in as well. With this 90 millimeter gun. Victory point here being lost. Pan 4 going back, got a pack 40 setting up sort of cover up the retreat. Good, good. MP4 2 remaining there. Not really trying to set up a bit more further. Maybe a sort of bit here where it can sort of, you know, more easily close up a larger gap. I mean, the thing is, with this amount of territory that has to cover, it's always going to be easier for the enemy to sneak in from the far side to get behind it. So, I mean, it's not exactly foolproof this setup here from High 5. In particular, with no one to sort of actually spot for it. Which does leave it a bit blind in a sense. In particular, again, here on the far sides of the arc. But another push here, I mean, in that guy, high five is not just, you know, bashing his head into water, sort of trying to up maneuvers, apparently sort of out harass him. At the same time, here, going to lose a lot of trouble, got a lot of rifles, plus the lieutenant, veteran, and fleet there, of course, they have grenades here. And there goes something to wiped. And taught. That's two gun of this quarter act here, gone for high five. Not good at all. And it definitely seems like he's aiming basically for the tiger. It's now been doing what he can to bleed out to Yankees with this scoped Gewehr 43. Even though the Germans technically refer to the k 98 k since it did have a bit more punch and range, whereas of course the G43 did have a bit higher rate of fire. Now obviously you're not necessarily looking for a rate of fire when it comes to sniping. But half having a bit of trouble now, suffered some losses, he's down a lot of infantry, though it seems like here that Django suffered further infantry losses there as well. Time here for the mid-game analysis, though current situation is High Five is losing territory again. I mean, he needs to sort of set up his MD4 to a bit better. I mean, his defenses are a bit crooked. They're not quite properly aligned. I feel like his MD4 2 is way too far back to be in a sense. I mean, he pushes forward, but he leaves his MD4 2s in a sense. I mean, it's not really factoring into his plans. It can actually be seen. I mean, I think he could have done a lot more damage, plus help Django much better back had he been a bit more aggressive with his MD4 2. I mean, particularly once he hit into one, get off some incendiary rounds that could have bled out Django a lot more successfully. So, I mean, he needs to sort of figure out his defense is a bit better, maybe lay down some more mines, but otherwise use his MD42 a bit more aggressively and, you know, move it about a bit more. He also needs more aggressive with his Panzer I mean, he's been surprisingly passive with it. I mean, he sort of went forward, but he's not really using it. And, of course, there are the bazookas, and they are a bit of a threat, but that's no real excuse to basically hold it back like it's some part of a museum. It's a tank. Get out there and tank stuff up. Also, I think some Panzer is right now would be good. An officer, I think, would also be a good choice, could sort of boost up his other troops. But otherwise, longer term, Panzer I mean, he's obviously looking for the Tiger, of course, you get that, though, of course, needs to be careful there with the Jackson out on the field, plus a pack 40, and even the Bazookas there could be a threat if the Tiger gets flanked. I mean, there are some issues there for High Five as well to keep in mind while fighting his American foe, but he needs to be more aggressive, he needs to be more cohesive. I mean, there are some issues there, despite being nice as well, you're outflanking and harassing and so on to an extent. At the same time, the elements are just sort of really don't fit into it again, that's the MD4 which is just basically already there, always and the Panzer IV which is also not really there either in the fighting so he needs to sort of work all the elements he has into his army into actually attacking and then afterwards defending otherwise he's going to be in a lot of trouble 
But Jank, I mean, we got a lot of force. We got fuel caches here, of course. You certainly got a bit more troops. He's also got a large amount of firepower there with all the brand lap machine guns, the bazookas, and the stolen equipment there. I mean, there's less to sort of really highlight here for Django. I mean, he could probably get with another Jackson since he's obviously knows his opponent's going for assault support. He's going to get Tiger since he's only seen one Panther fall. Another Jackson would help out, though he could easily just go for some Sherman to sort of help deal with infantry and armor as well. So, I mean, there's a few thoughts there as well for Django. Another one would actually be going for an M20 now and begin laying down mines to try and capture any Tiger that rushes forward. So, I mean, if you can get that immobilized. That could easily be GG right then on the spot there for Django. Otherwise, a part of me would like to see some pathfinders lay down some beacons here and there at the front line to allow the paratroopers to actually reinforce from the front line. I mean, that's really something people forget about the pathfinders and the beacon. The beacon allows paratroopers to reinforce at the front line. So that is a little detail there to keep in mind. It's actually quite a neat one. But otherwise, I mean, in terms of tactics and strategy, I mean, overall, he could just sort of keep up with what he's already doing in that regard. I mean, he's successfully holding back high fire at the moment. I mean, that we got, you know, he's doing pretty well. So, let's head back into the fight. We are losing a sector. Quick bit of sniping there at the lieutenant. In this case, did not seem to die out here. Because he's already dead. There he goes, all up here, Patrick, cleaning up the pack forward. There you go, got the pants all ready to cover. MP42 gets the unit you know, there, rather than getting sniped. Still no sign of incendiaries, so though. Still no sign of incendiaries. High five seems rather reluctant to utilize them in that the cop bomb again. There's a certain lack of aggression. Again, you should usually be pushing up here with the pants and push back the Americans here, though, of course, the pack of force here flanked up the more. So, it says they've got the Jackson joining in. Pants fall by the least repair, but just being held back here. Just being held back. And being lost again. All the blitz, they're about to get knocked out. Need to unpack it and get it back. Pack it up and get it moving. Has been hit, but there you go. Over Blitz, number two, wreck there. Another loss of Vital Bar. There, I'm like raw material. We might see the M40. There you go, Pack Body with the Pant 4. Jackson moves in. Jackson moves in. Half of Dex has been on the Tiger. M242, they're annihilated. Through the Pack 40 there. Jackson taking a hit there. He's ooh, getting a Pant Pass off. Good, good. Missed. Panda 4 missed. Rather reckless rush here by Django. Rather reckless. You could see that. Yeah, there Jackson is going to go down. Another shot there. Main gun destroyed. A bit of luck there for high fire. But there you go. Destroyed engine. Jackson can't move anymore. Well, he can't move a bit. I suppose. But there you go. Finding it on fire. The ammo hold goes off. Sending the crew all over the place. And there you go. Tiger is available for high five. You should definitely try and call in that Tiger. And try and pressure his opponent harder. I mean, now is the time to strike against the enemies of Germany. Crush them and move almost to end final victory for the fatherland. Tiger there you go, Tiger arrives there. Shreya punch up the and has dispatched one. Rather than close getting wiped out. And there's definitely the bleed there now against Django. Might have pushed a bit too far, but I mean, that Jackson was very much too extended in his seal to get that Panzer IV out. And even when you consider it, Jackson's not necessarily a very good trade off for a Panzer IV. Since the Jackson is actually a bit more expensive than a Panzer IV. No one way there. Tiger advances, there you go, good hit. Lieutenant once more ended here by the might of the Third Reich. A few bazookas there, but pretty much. No effect there on the Tiger's thick front line there, 100 millimeters. Pack 40 moving up again here, but already pulling back. And then high five seems to be getting a bit passive again. No aggression, no attempt even at flanking. I mean, he knows it's there. Get up on the side, knock it out, kill it, destroy it. Come on, man, you went for a tiger, the use it. Has released a tiger for our use. Heavy panzer here. Panzer 4 being repaired. Yeah. There you go, Jax number two there moves up for Django. Come on, move that bloody tiger. There we go. He's got two tanks now, one heavy, one medium. He should get attacking, he should get killing. 
Inatigal, he's got a notable armor advantage that can actually break through here. Jank if he plays his cards correctly, but so far he's just holding back. Again, there seems to be no real too passive element here to high five, who despite the start, pretty aggressive with flex there. But perhaps Django's play there has rather scared him. Caught him a bit off guard, then actually caused him to be passive, in which case, of course, mean that's not really good. You shouldn't allow your opponent to intimidate you. Number four, two cleared out again. That and Gallimine, mean, high five needs to be more careful there. He says he's up, he has to tend to just leave them way too exposed. But there you go, Tigers, Panzer Force, they're firing away. Rifle taking heavy loss there from Sniper Fire and Panzer Fire. Jax moving up there, Tiger, Panzer Force. Could try and engage in this set though, pull back, pull back. Lieutenant, they need to be careful. Heavy fire there from the Panzer come back, and Tiger will join in. In fact, will join in, turning that 88 minute gun towards the Lieutenant. And then the unit gets away. At the same time, they got some pressure on the right flank, but again, nope. There's no armor actually supporting, it's just the infantry rather on its own. There's no armor support, no real impetus behind it. Then the tanks are basically just sort of being used more defensively. Like a defensive reserve sort of meant to stall an assault, but apparently never really defeated. Which is rather a not very good way of using your tanks. Unless your opponent is very bad at using his tanks and tank destroyers. You've also here got a P-47 rocket strafe ready again. Tiger, Panzer Fort, what's he doing with them? Absolutely nothing. I have no idea what high five is thinking here, but I'm definitely not very much focused towards the idea of giving him a high five. In fact, I would quite give him the opposite at the moment. And again, you don't go for a Tiger and a Panzer Fort and then have them stand about doing nothing. I mean, that does seem to be a lesson apparently I have to sort of make as of late again. Way too many passive players, even in the higher sort of levels, too many just holding back, and apparently expecting their opponent to do all the actual work. As they push back, you quickly will with the Lieutenant, 17 kills there. Good work, good work. And a second sniper moving up here for half hour, just to increase Additional man probably there versus Django. Pants 4 being repaired. Maybe he'll attack when out, but now we've got a second Jackson again. In that regard, High Five has now lost an opportunity to sort of really have an easy engagement there versus the Panda 4 instead. Now it'll be a lot more to tank as a sort of a raid versus his own armor because again, High Five held back. Another one of arrives. Rolls it there under the trees, enjoying the scenery and whatnot. Tiger being prepared, apparently, had suffered a slight scratch there. Forces moving ahead here. Pack moving up and finally getting his armor moving. Finally! Come on! Now as they finally got a larger push here from Yanko in return. Rifle and paratroopers. Tiger Pantor fires. But again, overall note, the way he sort of responds is very sluggish. Like he's got no sort of real interest in sort of doing anything with his tanks, which again begs the question, why the hell did he get a Tiger in the first place? He's not going to use it. I mean, that's a lot of resources. That's... Almost one quarter of your population, that's a lot of fuel, that's a lot of manpower, yet he's doing nothing with it. I mean, just by not using it, he's essentially also wasting resources. I mean, it's rather mind-boggling here what High Five is thinking. Why would you go for Pantors? Why would you go for Tigers if you get, you're not going to use them? At the same time, I mean, Django at this point is all getting rather defensive and well, passive as well. And basically, we've got two players here not really intent on attacking the other one. They're just sort of waiting out, hoping for the other attack, so they don't have to do it. And looks like here, something's happening. Some unseen cog in High Five's mind is actually moving, churning the rest ahead. Panzers there, snipers, but there's no actual infantry sort of being moved in with it. I'm a bit worried about that, a bit worried. 
And he's not exactly with a lot of alacrity is moving. I mean, he's just sort of, you know, slowly moving ahead. Oh, it looks like he might actually send a trying to go up the Tiger first. I mean, that's good. Have the heavy attack lead the way. Shielding up shots over the Panther to get close and then maybe blitz up to get behind the enemy. I mean, that would be a working strategy. They've got sniping set up to kill the point. Snipes up them there on the pack 40. Second sniper might want to move up there and help as well. If you clear up that pack 4, that might help a bit. Pioneers moving up here. Kind of this up there. Finally, something is happening. Django Barlow floating a ton of. You know, there go. Tiger Panther opening up the advancing infantry. Django's counterattack here, not exactly the world's best there, but leaving the infantry in the line of having the tank. There you go. Jackson's flank in, looks like there might have been a distraction there. Jackson's firing there. Rather because they go P47 is joining in as well. Pack 40, they're moving up to cover here. This is certainly now things are happening. They're 22 on the Panther 4, they're 22. Shirts are now behind the Panther 4. And there you go, it gets knocked out, but the Jackson there gets knocked out as well. Pack 40 opens up. No. And of what a wreck, they were heroes despite IFO's best and ensuring they didn't become that. Pack 4 there continue to fight, Tiger does nothing to pursue that and pulls back completely here. All rocket fire just hammering away at the ground, Pack 40 here trying to get the jacks but he's using the spell. Oh. Why is Django not moving it away? Why is Django not moving? But there we go, we got paratroopers right and moving in there, swiftly annihilating the crew except Heinz retreats. Bit of a chaotic battle, there we go, pack 40 stones, that's two pack 40s on the surface of Janko, we got a second Tiger call up here for high five, a second Tiger. He's definitely going heavy on the armour here, but can he actually utilise it, can he actually make any good out of it? Now, high five is in a bit of trouble, I mean he's more or less got the same population, but when you sort of look at what he's got, I mean his opponent's got a lot more than he's got, and he's, of course he's got two tigers, but he keeps using them like he's previously used his tanks, I mean there's going to be some props if he's just going to be hanging about, because again, that's basically almost half his population, which again also means a large upkeep, which is doing absolutely nothing. There you go, goes back here for the lieutenant, 18 kills there, 13 kills the paratroop, which actually being repaired. Might want to call another Jackson, I suppose. Snipers are moving it again, trying to sort of bleed out Jank. We couldn't even see the pair of there wiped out. Jank is not careful. Down to two men, we got two snipers. I mean, the results could very well be very predictable. Yeah. Not entirely sure here what Jank was thinking. Our way, we got a brown up seeing their drop for use for anyone who picks it up. MD42 pack 40 blocking in advance here. Temporarily at most, I imagine, since of course one quick flank through here could easily be dealt with. Right flank goes rather open. Victory point probably to the advantage of Janko somewhat. Tiger's been repaired. Those needs to be enforced. And again, apart from like to see an officer or some pants are going to be here for Django. Also, that MD42 needs to be pruned. More pioneers for good. I mean, he's got two Tiger. He's going to get these three pioneers to sort of keep that running just reasonably. There you go. Tiger's been mobilized here. Tiger's on the move. Achtung, Achtung, Panzermarsch, I hope. Nope, the other Tiger still is going to pass his wing at the fresh Tiger here, opening up the paratroopers, misses though. There you go, paratroopers on the run. Scott on the way here to provide some anti hope support. Tigers need to get moving though. Put them together and charge them forward. Wield them like a hammer. Against those who would pose Germany. There we go, Tiger's on the move. Going up the cop on there, go Tiger ums up, Tiger ums up there with his 88 million gun. Masuga fires, fails to penetrate, Tiger shoots, misses, machine guns firing, they're going to tank rock, they fail to penetrate as well. Snipers on the run. Need to move ahead here with the Tiger, so we got some re echelons here with the mines with a bazooka. Oh, there we go, ohms up, ohms up. Or not. Well, he does, but he keeps turning away, so the turret has to sort of slowly turn to sort of try and catch them. Running gate again, without support, without support. There's a certain, you know, lack of uh, folks here, despite having a few forces. Those in the back with the paratroop, top there, being secured by other gunners. So they're advancing, and before a lot of trouble, and before a lot of trouble. Heck, Foley moving up here. Other pack 40 would also be nice to see there. We have some letting over there going before almost wiped up, almost wiped out. Pack 40 up top there. Jack's moving up as well. Tires are taking heavy damage here from American anti-tank fire the bazooka there gets it off a few hits. 
There go Curve Tigers pull back. High five. In need of a lot more pioneers to fix them up. We want to have it done quickly. That is. At 40 there in the way. Quick rough grenade there and fails to make an impression there. Bit of a gut thrown off. He's getting a pack 40 more, but not further pioneers against to help expedite the repairs on his two tigers, a particular one that is down to less than half health. In that regard, I can't help but feel that high fire's priorities at the moment are a bit off. I mean, the snipers are doing an alright job sort of bleeding out, at least sort of ensuring that Janker doesn't get too aggressive, but that's about it really at the moment. He's still got most of the territory there, he's got most of the victory points. And those tigers again will be out of commission for some time since they've got one pioneer squad to repair them. One pioneer squad. And that's definitely not very efficient. Incendio snipe round will be good around here. There we go. Few men there horribly dying, rescuing stunned. Bet you two of them, the other snipe got the Scott Hippo biting as well, opening up with them with a bad arse. Victory points not looking good, not looking good. I5 needs to pull himself together. Display some poop steel in his heart. Something like that. Of course, County's not looking again very positive here for him. Brings them into the center. Jack's really going to open up. Not they can do a lot. Then we got the pack 40 joining in. Reactions there. Veterans, he's free with mines, rooms, and bazookas. There you go. Petrus versus going to do this. Veterans 3 versus Veterans 3. The lap machine gun versus lap machine gun. They might call it. go. New laps get off a grenade. Except he seems to have bugged up, which is rather unfortunate there for Jango, though. Tiger almost trying. Ready, but it's still some time to go there. Here's they're pushed away. Up here, though. Paratroopers just barely win this, but the act end up taking rather heavy casualties. I mean, their paratroopers, not the SS. We have 100 points remaining. No one's picked up that brown lap machine gun, but they're going to do back with the Scott. Pack 40 is. This one, surprised enough, not with prioritized vehicles on it, neither the Jacks. I'm a bit surprised here. I'm curious as to what Django's thinking if this is just an accident, or there's some deeper purpose. We've got a flag punch now on the way. Obviously, you might be worried about the P-47s getting an anti-aircraft gun. Might help with that a bit, though, of course, adding in more machine guns to the Tigers would also help a bit with that. In particular, since those Pentagon machine guns are actually meant for anti-aircraft defense. A little fun fact there. Nigger dealing with a few cash here still. Both Tigers almost operational here still. Need a bit of repairs on this one, interestingly enough. And again, he's only using one Pioneer Squad there. Seeing maybe an attack from here. I mean, that would actually be quite devastating. We've got both tigers here. Attack from here. Catch a lot of support units of guard, particularly the ambulance with the major. Maybe get close enough to the jacks in the pack force then deal with them. Then they can always launch the second assault up through here. But no, no sign of that so far. Instead, time to push up through here with the snipers in the pack 40. No armor support, by the way. No armor support in any way. We've got a jacks there flanking up. Scott moving in there. Might be able to get the Scott there. Pack 4 needs to set up. Isn't. Other Tiger not responding on. There we go. We got P-47 straight forward in. The US Air Force is on the move again. Pack 40 turns about here. Rockets flying through the air. Connects here with the Tiger. Fury hits there with the rockets. Tiger's pulling back at the same time. Scott winning all the way up there. And he's lost one sniper here. One sniper dead. Black Panther each part support. Attempt support. Pioneers took a few hits. Uh, he's still in the line of fire with the P47. He needs to pull back his Ospin a bit there. Oh, he's going to get focused down here. Ah, I5 Forsyth. Forsyth. Finally getting some more pioneers though. And we go attack run here, mate, on the Ostwind. 
Taking a bit of damage there. And there you go, P47 crashes down. Far away up in the north. A small victory here for Deutschland, but that's about it really. Overall, High Five is severely extended. He's taking heavy loss, and again, he's being increasingly passive when he needs to be more aggressive as the victory points are bleeding out, running out like sand in an hourglass. More pioneers. Finally, he's getting three pioneers. Finally. He's moving it straight into the MV4. Did the MV4 Jack end up retreating here? Django losing all nerve. He probably could have popped and sent around to talk to those grenadiers rather rapidly. Scott moving up close to the MV4. Is there could actually risk Panzer Faust? Bit low there by Django. Django might be getting overconfident. This could be a small gap here for Haifa if he gets aggressive. It's sort of punish him. If. And there goes Scott just devastating those grenadiers. Heinz, Helmut, and Friedrich. So this one tiger sort of rapidly repaired, but again victory points are not looking good. We got big one veg level of veterans here opening up for the high velocity arm facing titanium rounds. Or tungsten actually. Titanium, but uh, which of course also increases the damage done by the Jackson. Little fun fact there, which is surprisingly forgotten as well. There you go, Tiger on the move here. They should be moving up with another Tiger as soon as possible. There we go, four bouts, four bouts. Is this still undefined? No, nope, pulled back here. Does not try to blitz or anything here through the enemy. If he had an officer, he could actually land a smoke screen. Sort of allow him to get past the pack 40s more easily, but none of that. None of that. Down to 41 victory the points here. Attempting to steal our sector. Petrus taking heavy fire from the Tiger. It's now taking hits. Veteran the fleet, 28 kills. Scott moving up. Jackson finding weight. Lieutenant there taking a heavy, nasty shot there. Sniper. Almost getting wiped there, almost getting wiped. Tiger needs to move up though. Back 40 cleared out. Come on, four bats. Scott then in trouble. Scott in trouble. Tiger this shoot. Scores a hit. Might get it. Might get it. What? Of course, he stopped moving. Other Tiger again not moving. I mean, I'm not sure what's going on with High Five. Seems to be increasingly passive and not really doing anything. Another P47 strike here going in. There you go, Jackson flanking about there, getting behind, he could have stayed a bit of distance, but there you go. Anyways, game over here, game over, a victory to Django, though it was a bit peculiar at times. So overall, some very nice aggressive flanking play for him, I mean, he just didn't just, you know, charge head on, he kept sort of trying to find the weak spots, get behind his opponent, do some damage. I mean, he also saw both trying to cut each other off, but again, a bit of lacking defense there. The problem was, so basically, for High Farm, as the game progressed, he got increasingly passive again, he might have gotten spooked there by Django, intimidated, but at the same time, it resulted in basically wasting a lot of resources by having lots of tanks standing about doing nothing. He also lacked pioneers to repair them. In that regard, there were some serious issues with High Five's armor play. There was also a high degree of lacking of flanking or any creativity in how to use them. I mean, that really hurt him as well and just basically made the Tiger tanks into doorstops for all intents and purposes. Since again, they drew up a lot of resources, a lot of population, and again, he did nothing with them. I mean, that was absolutely. You know, terrible. But again, I mean, it's something you see a lot there with some higher ranking players. Again, they get a lot of armor and then they just seem to hold back. I mean, use it, use it, push forwards, attack, flank, kill. This is company of heroes, not company of watching paint dry with your tanks. I mean, get in there. I mean, really, that basically cost high five the game. He could easily have won this if he'd just been more aggressive. But again, he kept holding back. He allowed Django to get back in the fight. Again, that's one key to remember. Sitting around waiting can allow you to build up your force, but remember, as you're building up your force, so is your opponent. And whoever's going to be more aggressive in the end and creatively aggressive is going to win in most cases. And again, that was Django. I mean, if we look, if the bazookas were sort of nice, but again, could have used a bit more aggressive, a bit more focused. I mean, there were some issues there again. The high manpower flow, then the early stages of the match 
was a bit worrying that was definitely something he should have done, he should have not done with. But otherwise, you know, good use of fuel cash gave him a lot of their fuel to work with. Nice to see some flanking there from Jackson, though he could have kept them a bit more distance there, I think. But otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this fight. I hope you learned something from it. I hope it gave some very good ideas as what to do and what not to do. Again, remember, don't get Tiger Tanks and do bugger all with them. This is Imperial Link Team. Cheers, and thank you for watching. And hopefully, we'll see you each other tomorrow. This is Imperial Link. Cheers. Bye.